The First Reformed Church of Saddlebrook presents this week's service to you. In this week's service, Pastor Christopher continues the series, One Love, about the love of God. We also have music from the adult choir. We hope you enjoy watching this week's service. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Pastor Christopher, welcome you to First Reformed Church. Very glad that you're here. And I uh, want to direct your attention to some announcements. A couple of things. Um, in the bulletin and then beyond the bulletin. <clears throat> uh, next Sunday is Worldwide Communion. And that's uh, a good thing because all around the world, churches are celebrating the Lord's Supper. We will join in that. That's important. A couple of things also. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we asked for your help in terms of uh, newspapers for Marta because she's moving. We also need some help with moving. Um, it's October 1st, right? October 1st, a uh, moving truck is coming to Marta's house. She's right on Saddle River Road. And um, need some, some strong people to help lift some stuff. So Marta, raise your hand. She's back there. She needs some help. So uh, please try to get in touch with her or me, and I'll connect you with her. But that's, is that a Saturday? Saturday, August, October 1st. Let us know if you can help with that, or if you know someone who would like to help with that. Uh, another announcement is this Thursday, this has been um, something that's been in the works for a couple of months now. Uh, everybody remember Metro Church? Metro Church was over on Midland Avenue. They moved uh, to, uh, I think it's in Waldwick now. But uh, I've stayed in touch with some people, and uh, over the last couple of months, uh, a guy from there named Terry had reached out to me and said, hey, on Thursday nights, or one Thursday night a month, we go to Meals with a Mission in Garfield, and we make meals for people. And he said, I'd love you to come. So in August, scheduling was off, but uh, that Thursday was this Thursday. So our Thursday night class went, and we made meals for 250 people, and it was chicken and rice and and corn. It was great fellowship, working together with some other churches, and, and helping the community. And so we want you to be aware of that, because there may be more opportunities like that, either with this, Meals with a Mission, or something along those lines. Please see me if that has any, if you have any interest in that. Um, again, that had been in the works for a couple of months. It just happened to work out that time. But there'll be future opportunities, not just with that one, but uh, with Community Serve, we want to uh, enable other opportunities. Make, making meals may not be your thing, it might be something else. But uh, we will continue to uh, branch out. Other announcements? Okay, uh, I just want to bring everybody up to date on uh, our tricentennial celebrations for Saddlebrook. <laughs> um, the committee met last Monday at the Saddlebrook Library, and I just want to bring your attention to a big event coming up in November. There's going to be a big gala dinner on Friday, November 11th, from 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. at the Crown Plaza, the Big Round Hotel building at Kenny Place off of Midland. And there will be a cocktail hour. And the cost of attendance, it's going to be a little pricey. It's $75 a person. So it will be more geared towards older people, more adults. But everyone is welcome to come. And if you want to get tickets, you can purchase them from Town Hall at 93 Market Street. And if you're interested in coming, or if you need more information, you can contact me anytime. Thanks. Thank you. Other announcements? Good. Let's start with some prayer. Lord, we turn to you. We come to you. Uh, teach us more about love, about loving you and loving others. We want to hear your word today. We want to praise you and give you an offering. In Jesus' name, amen.
join me in the call to worship. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will treasure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive him whenever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is the commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Amen. Please rise and join in singing hymn number 352, O oh, the Deep, Deep Love of Jesus. Yes, please be seated. Need God's forgiveness. Let's ask him. Lord, forgive us. So many times in the last week, we lost sight of you. We got distracted. We got focused on things that, that weren't you and, and aren't of you and your kingdom. And that's where we get into trouble. And our hearts wander. And we're sorry for that. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your mercy. And we ask for this power, the Holy Spirit, to repent and to turn from this world, the things of this world, to the things of your kingdom. Grace, justice, reconciliation. A need for you, a desperate need for you in every part of our lives. Strengthen us. 
We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a few moments of silent prayer and reflection. Amen. Here's some assurance and forgiveness, uh, some good news this morning. Let's say it together. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Yes. I'd like to invite the children forward for a message. All right. Good morning. Good to see everybody here. Well, um, let's, let's start with this. See those flowers there? Look pretty nice, right? Over here, too. How, how do they get like that? How do I, if I want to grow some flowers or some plants, what do I need? Good. What? Sun. Okay, what else do I need? Seeds. They would come from the seeds. What else? There's one more ingredient I'm hoping you might... Yes, water. 
What does water do? How does the water, how does the water help the plant grow and the flowers become beautiful like that? What? Excellent, hydrates. Maybe you're a future scientist. That's very good. The water hydrates, gives water to, or puts life into the uh, plants or the flowers. Well, guess what? In the Bible, there's something called Psalm 1. There are many psalms, but there's a number one. And that Psalm 1 talks about that someone who loves God and someone who studies his What's this? Somebody who studies God's word or the Bible is like a tree or a plant planted by a nice stream. Have you ever seen a dying tree by a stream? You have? Huh, that must have been strange because if it's by the water, it usually does very well. And so the psalm, the author of the psalms, David, in that one, he was saying, if you study this, you're always going to be growing. You're always going to be alive. How about that? Now, what's going to happen to those flowers after a couple of days if we leave them there? Yeah, they're going to die. And plants and trees, you know, sometimes they die. But, like David was saying, you read the Bible, you get that word hydrating, so to speak, in your body, like Angelina said, you're going to keep growing and growing. And there are people here who have been reading the Bible, some for 94 years, and they're still growing. And that's a beautiful thing. So yes, do you need food? Do humans need food to grow? And it's good to get outside and exercise and have water. But for your inside, for your soul to grow, you want to keep reading that Bible, and you're going to grow wonderfully. Keep that in mind, okay? Anything we can pray for today? What? My birthday. It's your grandpa's birthday. That's nice. Yes. It's your birthday. Is it today? Oh, Monday? Oh, Friday. It was or it's coming? Great. Well, that'll be great. Well, good. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for um, bringing people into this world that are special to us like Angelina's grandfather and Brianna and many others here today, Howard too, and um, we give thanks that you are the giver, you are the author of life. We praise you for that. We ask you to watch over these children and keep them growing in your word, keep them growing in general, and watch over them. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yes, please greet one another with the love of Christ. I have to ask you something. Yeah. Do you Continuing in our series, One Love. Last week we heard from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Now we're going to read the rest of that section, 13 through 21. The operation, the running of a church is, has many, just like a lot of organizations, has many moving parts. And you have to keep all of those moving, whether it's the lights on or uh, making sure there's worship on Sunday, um, Bible studies, luncheons whole bunch of things that go on, making sure uh, the offerings collected, a whole bunch of things have to run smoothly. But there's one thing we need to do, and those things need to happen, but there's one thing we need to do very, very well, and that's loving. Loving God and loving one another. And you can have a church, and I've seen this, you can have a church that does everything else well, but not love. And that's missing the point. So that's this series. Um, let's ask for some Holy Spirit help. Lord, flood your, this place with your Holy Spirit and our hearts as well. That's what we need to love you and love one another. If left to our own ways, well, we're, we're pretty selfish. But with your Holy Spirit's help, uh, so many things, all things are possible, but certainly loving you passionately, loving our brothers and sisters is, uh, is very possible and needed. Let this word speak to us so clearly this morning, in Jesus' name, amen. First John chapter 4, verses 13 through 21, listen for God's word. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love of God has for us, the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected or completed among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached perfection or completion in love. We love because he first loved us. And those who say, I love God, but hate their brothers and sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes. This week I checked a number of lists of phobias or fears of human beings, human beings and their fears. And I wanted to give you a chance, I'll tell you the results, but uh, give you a chance. What do you think some of the top fears are for... Um, for us human beings, what are we most afraid of? You can say it out loud. Spiders. Death, I heard. What? Heights. That was there too. Yes. What? All right, all right, all right. What? Crowds. Crowds. Yeah, that was there too. Okay. Ready? Number one, still public speaking. Across the board, public, yes, Mary, sorry, yeah. Public speaking, um, insects and spiders and things like that. Uh, crowds was in there. 
Um, doctors and dentists, right? Fear of the dentist, fear of white coat syndrome, you've heard that. Um, death, you know, I checked a bunch of lists just to make sure I could do a, a composite. Death wasn't really on there. I don't know if something's changed. I mean, you mentioned it, and certainly hear of that, but interestingly, it wasn't on a lot of lists. I don't know if, what that means, but um, it's interesting that those lists are compiled and you can look it up yourself, phobias and things like that. I would suggest there's, there are a couple of other items that didn't make that list that I have experienced or observed as, um, as a pastor and listening to you and listening to people over the years. Um, no one's ever come to the pastor and said, can you help me with my fear of spiders? No one's ever said that, appropriately. No one's ever said that. Um, what people have come to talk to the pastor about in terms of fear is fear of God and his judgment, right? Fear of being rejected by God and others. Um, and the other one would be fear of not being worthy of, of God's love and, and other people's love. Those are the ones that I hear. Nobody, like I said, nobody talks to me about crowds and, and uh, spiders. Those ones that I mentioned are very real. And it's interesting that not a lot has changed in terms of human nature. Everything has changed. But in terms of human nature, not much has changed from the first century to the 21st century. In some ways, John, speaking here in this letter, was addressing very similar things that I hear very often from, from believers and non-believers. Is, is this God stuff real? Is it real or is it just a bunch of stories? Could God really love me? One of the other things John was dealing with is, as, as we deal with today, some false teachers had kind of entered into the, uh, the realm there. And one of the things they tried to push was, hey, this Jesus, he was a nice guy, but he was not, he was not the son of God. Nobody's that. Nobody's come like that. And so one of the things John tries to address in this letter is he was the son of God. He was real. And I'm going to show you evidence for that. So often our fears, false fear, there's an acronym for fear. False evidence appearing real. You've heard that. False evidence appearing real. That is, um, that's one of the ways we get afraid of things. We look at false evidence and we think, this is the way it is. And so John writes in this letter, let me give you some evidence that is not false. Let me give you some some good evidence, and also address fear at the same time. Let's look at this letter. It's very important. It's going to talk to us. It's going to teach us about God's love and loving one another. <clears throat> Starts off, of course, uh, whether it's Gospel of John or this letter, uh, about abiding. If there was, you know, uh, one a key word from Gospel of John, this letter, it's about abiding. God abiding in us, we abiding in him. John chapter 15. Uh, in fact, we're going to read that soon. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. Holy Spirit, abiding in us, dwelling in us, enabling us to be holy. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent the Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. Remember, another other key um, themes, love, truth, love and truth, the connection between the two, John, talking about these. And so when we're talking about, when he's trying to address either the false teachers or the people who started to believe and wander away from the original teaching, John is saying, you've seen it. We know it. It's the truth. And we know that God abides in us. When we say Jesus is the Son of God, we believe the love that God has for us. First century or 21st century, 
it is a difficult challenge to convince people that God is real. Sometimes you may sit here and think, I'm not so sure God is real. What's the evidence? Well, someone came up to you and said, hey, I'm an atheist, I'm, I don't believe this stuff. What's some evidence? Show me, prove this to me. First thing you might say is, well, we've got the Bible. And we've got these, these truthful words that stand the test of time. And someone might say, nah, that's just that's some words in a book. Give me some other evidence. We might say, well, look at, look at this... Look at nature and creation and all these beautiful things. That just didn't happen. No, no, a bunch of molecules got together and, you know, that's how that stuff came together. Okay. What's the next one you'd say? Watch a group of people gathered in Jesus' name love one another and love other people. How do you argue against that? Because if you look at the rest of the world, what is reigning, ruling in the world? Fear, terror, hatred. That's the world today. That's the world (laughs) forever. But there are these pockets of that stand out and prove, as John is saying, that there's evidence that someone, Jesus, came into this world from heaven and changed lives in such a way that the evidence is not something in a book or a cloud, but in the way human beings treat one another. Especially in the backdrop or the context of human nature. Selfish, fearful, terrorizing, trying to control all of those pretty average day human nature characteristics. But then you come to a place like this and you see love at work. That's the evidence John wanted to show and has been showing ever since. He continues, verse 16, God is love. We heard that last week. And those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. That's the evidence Sometimes you've heard the phrase, the only sermon some people are ever going to hear is you and me and our lives. They may never pick up a Bible. They may never come through that door. How are they going to hear it or see it? The way we love one another. Now, is it going to be perfect? Are we going to miss sometimes? Yes. And then you ask for forgiveness. (laughs) God is love. Love has been perfected. You heard perfected at least twice here. And I would, I would uh, suggest that a better translation of that word is completion. I know because a lot of us hear perfection, we think immediately I don't measure up. And yes, that telos does have the meaning of perfection. But in this context, in this passage, it's completion. So let me read it again. Love has been completed or fulfilled among us in this, that we may have boldness. Boldness on the day of judgment. Boldness on the day of judgment. This is the other part of evidence that John's talking about. You want to have some evidence of God in this world? Especially up against fear. Talked about one of the fears, fear of death. Why do we fear death? We don't know what's going to happen. Maybe I haven't been good enough for God. Maybe he's going to say, you're going downstairs. John says, you don't have to worry about that. Because if you are in Christ, if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, if he's abiding in you and you are abiding in him, fear of the day of judgment or the end of your life or however you want to describe that, end times, fear gone. Because with Christ... That fear goes away. We're in him. We'll abide with him forever. You're free of that fear. Think about that. Boldness. Boldness on the day of judgment. Can you have that kind of confidence? You can. Boldness. 
on the day of judgment because of the love of God. How many people have you met? How many times have you maybe wondered? How many people have said, uh, uh, when I die, I don't know what's going to happen to me? When we understand this love, that fear is gone. Then he continues with fear. Watch this. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love, but completed or fulfilled love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached completion in love. When we have fear of punishment from God, we're not understanding the love of God. We haven't fully received. It's not complete in us yet. It doesn't mean feel bad right now if you don't get it. It's just saying you have more to grow. Fear has to do with punishment. Then you switch to brothers and sisters, spouses. If you're in relationships where there's fear and you're not safe, that's something else we should talk about. But just in general, watch the next time you go to a family function. Watch the next time you're in a meeting. You'll see fear. I observe it all the time. And it's coming from, not necessarily punishment, but certainly a sense of, am I worthy, am I not worthy? I have to prove it. And with this love of God, this all-enveloping love of God, there's no more proving. If you're sitting here today, or watching this, in Christ, there's nothing else to prove to anyone here. You don't have to be holier than someone. You don't have to be smarter than someone. The love completes. But so often we cause so much, so much chaos and pain because this love is not complete in us. And whether, it plays, whether this fear plays out as controlling other people, pushing people down to make yourself feel better, however way it plays out, and you'll see it. It's not God's love. Perfect love or com- completed love casts out fear. Think of your best relationships, the healthiest relationships. You're not afraid. You're not afraid of being rejected. You're not afraid of, of that person walking away. That feels good. Same thing with God and Christ. If you are in Christ, there won't be any more rejection. You're already in, so to speak. In Reformed theology, we say, perseverance of the saints. There's nothing we can do to undo the love of God. Why? Because he's choosing to love us. We're not earning it anymore. Last part. We love because he first loved us. So that up, up further in the chapter. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, back to evidence, visible, those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have, not, have seen cannot love God whom they haven't seen. This command, the commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must, must love their brothers and sisters also. I've heard it. A lot of people will think, and sometimes say, but not so much say, but I love God, and you know some of these other people, eh. You know. John crashes right through that this morning. In fact, he also crashes through the idea that... Um, Sometimes this happens where people say, well, I don't like that guy. I don't like this pastor. I don't like this one or that one or that one. Okay, you're welcome to not like anyone here, but you're not allowed to not love them. <laughs> you see the difference? We're all different people. We're not going to get along with everybody. 
But don't miss that we have to love everyone. That's huge. Especially in social settings, um, work, school, things like that. It can get pretty petty and ugly. I'm on this team, or I don't like this one, and it gets pretty ugly. And it's because, perhaps we're not familiar enough with this verse, if you love God, or let's take it back before that, anyone who says they love God but hates any brothers or sisters, you're liars. True, again, big theme in John and 1 John and Gospel of John, truth and lying and even in Revelation as well. And it's really important for us to search our hearts this morning and say, do I really love God? That's easy, right? We all love God. Well, the true test perhaps may be you love God. They're, these are connected. It's not one and then the other or sequential. It's if you love God and that love abiding in us means I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. There's no, there are no disclaimers. There's no <laughs> ways out of this. On the positive side of it, it is beautiful when brothers and sisters love one another. and It's visible. And it gets you through the worst times of your life. And everyone in this room has those stories. Like John said, it's when the spirit is about when we're cooperating with that spirit that abides in us. To abide means to live with, to dwell with. That's why it's one of the major themes. You know, John chapter 14, you often hear it at funerals, um, where it says, In my father's house there are many rooms. And dwelling places is the operative word there. And then later in that chapter, John chapter 14, he says, when you love the Father, the Father and I are going to come and live or dwell or abide with you. Abiding is just a, a fancy way of saying relationship. That when we're really dwelling and abiding with God, then loving others flows so much easier. This is meant to be a place of love. And not just sappy, <laughs> you know, trite kind of love, but real love. Unconditional. Powerful. Free from fear. That's why I started with that, because even in a place like this, so often there's fear. Fear that people may not accept me. Fear that God's going to find that, that flaw and reject me, or these people are going to see through me. Has that happened? I'm sure. Um, was it with ill intentions? Probably not often. But when God's love abides in us and he abides in this room, then there's a, a transforming, healing love that pushes away all the fears. Not just spiders and crowds, but a love that you can sit comfortably in, like that favorite chair you have, and you just rest easy. That's the love of God and this love of brothers and sisters where you're, there's nothing to fear anymore. I'm not going to be thrown out. It's a beautiful thing. And it's such a counter to the rest of this world. You go to work, you might lose your job because they don't like you. Um, in your family sometimes, you might be the black sheep. Um, that's not here. Black sheep, welcome. Black sheep loved, everybody loved. I want you to see this this morning so clearly 
Maybe you haven't experienced anywhere else. Maybe you haven't experienced it here yet. That should be our goal. That when you come in and when you go out, you are loved freely, completely, uh, abundantly. And that love heals and changes and gives life. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, some of us are still looking for, for the kind of love that John describes. Some of us have real fear in our hearts that we're not worthy. We might be rejected. We don't belong. You say otherwise in this word, and we're so thankful. Pray that some hearts are healed today by this word. We pray that some fears, all fears, are just cast away and thrown out of here and, and that um, there's just love between brothers and sisters and, and a, an overwhelming love for you. We thank you that one of your, you know, that you are, according to this word and our experience really, that you are love, you're many things, but you have such a great love for us. You sacrificed your son. You give us the Holy Spirit. You want to live and dwell with us. And then you want to see that love made visible in the way we treat one another. <clears throat> Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's, uh, let's give thanks to God for his great love. Praise Father, Son. Let's say thank you. Lord, there's so many things to thank you for. Um, there's, not enough, there's not enough money in this world to thank you for what you've done for us. But here's a portion of what you've blessed us with. We lift it up to you in Jesus' name and as a faithful offering, <clears throat> as a sacrifice. And uh, please take it and use it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> You know, I think uh, where I get the, the ability or the strength to do what I do comes from, from two main sources, and that is um, God's love. <clears throat> and I haven't, uh, I've, you know, the main things I've wrestled with, with about God or related to God are his timing um, and his plan. But one thing I've never, I've never wrestled with or doubted is his love. And I think that's, that's helped me. I, I say that to you, too. If you can get that solid, that helps with a lot of questions. And like John was saying in the letter, if you're not worried about the end anymore, because you have boldness on the Day of Judgment, then a lot of stuff is freed up. That other source, of course, is, is Jenny and the kids and, and family in general. But... I never, I never doubt Jenny's love for me. And that way I'm not, you know, walking around insecure. Uh, does Jenny love me or not? No. I encourage you to, you know, to, <clears throat> to receive the love that, that people have for you. Could be children if your spouse is no longer with us. But see, there is love for you. And open to it source of such tremendous strength. Again, the design. You've got God's love, love of brothers and sisters. You're, you're invincible. So give that some thought. I want to lift up some brothers and sisters in prayer, loving, praying for people. <clears throat> Part of loving is praying. So uh, let's lift up some joys and concerns. All right, let's pray. A lot to pray about. Lord, hear our prayers this morning. They come from our, from our hearts and souls of things uh, 
near to our lives and uh, for our country. Like Jeff said, we see a lot of strife, we see violence, we see crime, and we pray for solutions and healing beyond political candidates, Lord. We need a soul healing, a uh, healing in this land. And we're praying fervently for it. Please hear us. Lord, we want to pray for uh, Jimmy and his continued recovery. We pray for Aunt Ree and strength for her. I want to pray for Brother Matt, um, some answers as to some of his health issues and some healing there as well. We give thanks for Hank's life. Pray for comfort for um, his family. Lord, when I lift up Daryl, prayed for him a couple of months ago, and uh, we pray for your, um, first of all, strength for him and endurance, but also we pray for answers and, and healing for him as well. <clears throat> Lord, in so many ways, we, uh, we pray for uh, Vicky and also for Barbara. Um, health challenges abound. And uh, for those who have been healed and strengthened, um, we give thanks for that. We give you the, the glory for that. But uh, for others, continue to give them strength and patience. Lord, we lift up uh, Lisa and her recovery as well. Again, Lord, we turn to you about these, these fears and doubts that we have. Take them away. Let us lean into you and your love and find such completed, complete comfort there. And let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Continued prayer, stand in Rosalie as well. And um, <clears throat> again, next week is the, uh, the, the final part of this series, uh, One Love. We're going to talk about the body of Christ. And also we'll have the, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. It'll be a beautiful day. Please come to that. And then a series coming up after that, Way to Grow. Instead of Way to Go, Way to Grow. We're going to talk about how we grow in Christ. So keep those in mind. Let's sing. just sang it, joined by heart, to God's heart, and then to one another. It's beautiful. We celebrate it. When it breaks, we fix it and we heal it. And then we're just thankful. We send you forth in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi.